Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm Julie and today you are joining me on a brand new video. It is called 18 items to purge from your bathroom today. We are nearing the end of the year and I love to start a new year really fresh and focused and that always starts with my bathroom. It's getting to the point where it's feeling really cluttered, really chaotic and things are really just piling up. Purging is the first and most necessary step into a clean and well-kept house and I always start with purging anytime I embark on a brand new design. If you're looking for inspiration on how to create a more functional and calming bathroom, this video is for you. Before we get into the great purge and decluttering items that are no longer valuable to us, here are the five questions that you must ask yourself. The first question, is the item functional? Do I absolutely need this item? Does it make my life better, easier, or more beautiful? If you've answered yes to all of the above, then that item is an absolute keeper. Can I afford to replace this item right now? Number three, is the item expired? You might not know it, but all beauty products have a shelf life to them. We're talking everything from makeup to makeup brushes, to toiletries, even shampoos and conditioners. So you definitely want to check if the item has an actual expiration date or if it's smelling a little funky, we definitely have to get rid of those items. The next question is if you use it regularly, if not daily, at least once a week. Bathrooms are small enough as it is, so you want to make sure that everything that you house in your bathroom is functional, useful, beautiful, or something that you use regularly. The last question you may ask is if the item is a duplicate. If you have more than one item that serves the exact same function, consider which one you like better and then toss the duplicate. This is the same tip that I use to organize my kitchen cabinets and it just makes the entire space feel more streamlined and decluttered. I broke down this video into two separate categories. The first is very design related. We're talking about items that are more interior design related, not something that you really can rush out and do right now. Maybe it takes a little bit more planning. Maybe it takes a little bit more thought, effort, and a greater budget. The second category is more related to personal items. Items that you can throw out right now and they're more conducive to the daily functions of your bathroom rituals and home decor items. So while you may not be able to afford some of the interior design related items right now, it's definitely an investment that you can consider in the future. Let's jump right into the first item on the list. This is an interior design related element and you've heard me talk about it in dated home designs before and it is that wallpaper border. You know that really old dated wallpaper border that might be lining the crown molding of the space or it might be cutting the entire bathroom in half as a makeshift chair rail. Just get rid of that wallpaper border. I know what you're thinking, you might be trying to add some color, pattern, dimension, some graphics onto the wall with a wallpaper border, but just get rid of it. Not only is it a dated design, but it also could be physically cluttering your bathroom when a simple coat of really beautiful paint will do. The next item on the list that you should purge today are those ruffled window treatments. Again, this is another repeat item from my dated home designs in need of a major upgrade and I absolutely feel like there's so many more modern and chic updates for window treatments that you can use in the bathroom. Ruffled valances not only harbor a lot of bacteria and dust, especially if you're not laundering it regularly. In my opinion, ruffled valances and treatments just have a very old fashioned type of aesthetic to it. If the ruffled valance look is an intentional design direction on your part, of course, keep it, do what you love. But if it's unintentional or if it's just sitting there left over from the previous owner, you can opt to replace it with a really chic and modern non-woven shade that is really easy to clean. You can easily wipe it down and it doesn't harbor any dust, debris, mildew, or mold. The next item on the list is yellow light bulbs or fluorescent light bulbs that are hidden behind a plastic box for that matter. Lighting is so important in the bathroom, especially if you don't have a window. If you don't get really beautiful natural daylight coming through a window, you are really relying on the functionality of synthetic light. And there is nothing worse than too warm light 
or fluorescent lighting that's too cool and casts that really hideous blue glow. You're looking to mimic natural daylight as much as possible. So the color of the light bulb that I would recommend usually falls in the 2700K range to the 3000K range. The next item on my list are those matchy matchy rug sets. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about if you saw it. It's that matching toilet lid cover and the toilet tank with that contoured bath mat that sits right underneath the toilet and the coordinating bath mat. This is just a huge no on all counts and nothing cheapens the look of your entire bathroom than a matching set of polyester fibers. If you love the feel of something soft underfoot, especially when you're sitting on the toilet, then opt for really cushy house slippers. If you're looking for a non-slip bath mat to get in and out of the tub, you can opt for that standalone piece. Get rid of all of those matching pieces and just focus on the bath mat that is functional and ergonomic. Next on the list is that crusty broken shower head. I've lived with a crusty broken shower head myself and it was because it was so functional. I live in Anaheim, California and Anaheim is notorious for hard water. All of my fixtures have calcium deposits on it and I can't switch to a soft water system because I color my hair. And if you color your hair, you'll know that sulfate is like the number one no-no. If you have hard water in your home and you have calcium deposits on a shower head and it's been such a nightmare to clean, it's really time to replace it completely. I found a really awesome shower head with a built-in water filter for just under $40 on Amazon and it boasts over 40,000 five-star reviews. Well, almost five-star reviews, but 40,000, I mean, that's insane. I'll link it for you in the description box below. The next item on the list is plastic towel bars and plastic towel rings. We're talking about cheap plastic that degrades and cracks and discolors over time. Cheap plastic is just so flimsy and they really can't hold up to the daily wear and tear of heavy towels or even the little hand towels that you place right beside the sink. A really inexpensive alternative is going with metal or aluminum. I found a ton of higher quality products on Amazon, which I'll also link for you below. And the towel bar that I actually use in my bathroom is a double rod and it's just under $30. There are also really great options just under $20 that I'll link for you as well. The final item on this interior design list is over the toilet open shelving. I know what you renters are thinking out there. This key piece is so essential for bathroom storage and organization, but just hear me out. There is a really huge difference between over the toilet open shelving and over the toilet closed cabinetry. If you are someone who is not neat, not tidy or organized, you absolutely should invest in closed cabinetry so that you could really hide all of your junk. When you have open shelving, you really have to keep it really clean and tidy or else it further declutters the look of the bathroom. Not to mention that open shelving gets so dusty. So if you have a wire shelf or if you have a metal shelf, you are going to constantly be dusting that piece along with all of the toiletries and personal items that you're storing in that piece. A really great solution to over the toilet shelving is an actual closed cabinet. In my own bathroom, I have repurposed an upper kitchen cabinet for my bathroom storage, but clearly I own my home. So I don't have any problems anchoring this huge cabinet into my walls and making all of these holes and screwing them in with anchors. But if you're a renter and you don't wanna damage the walls and you're opting for a standalone piece that you can kind of just secure over the toilet, always look for closed cabinet pieces versus open storage. Now let's move on to the personal items that you need to purge from your bathroom today. Let's talk about all of those expired cosmetics, beauty products, and old makeup brushes. 
You wanna start by going through all of your makeup products. I mean, I'm talking about everything that you use. Eyeshadows, lipsticks, blushes, eyeliner, pretty much every single makeup product that you use and you're looking for an expiration date. You can usually find the expiration date right on the packaging itself or if that's kind of smudged off and you can't see it, open the package and just give it like a really quick whiff. If it's smelling funky, if it's cakey, if it's kind of broken in pieces, then it's definitely time to discard it. Next, you wanna go through the items and figure out what you actually use and what you don't. I am guilty of hanging on to a lot of old eyeshadow that I think, oh, one day I'll use it, one day I'll have an event, one day I'll have a costume party that I need all of these crazy bold colors for. And you know what? It's been a year and that time has not come. So why am I holding on to really valuable real estate in my cabinets and my drawers when I really should be getting rid of these items? That is one of my key tips when you're trying to declutter your bathroom cabinets and drawers. You really have to be ruthless in your assessment and really consider, do these items hold value in my bathroom? Next, you wanna go through all of your makeup brushes and look for the ones that are either losing fibers or the bristles are just not as fresh anymore. A lot of the times you'll buy an entire makeup brush set and you might only use like one or two brushes and you're hanging on to the three or the four that the brush set came with. Just keep what you use. I cannot stress that enough. Keep what you use, stop buying brush sets, and only invest in the brushes that you actually use on the daily. Next on the list is skin and hair care products. I am a beauty junkie and I also do so much to my hair and obviously it's overprocessed, and I need so many different products to kind of keep it really natural and healthy looking. I've amassed so many products over the years, some of which I've tested, some of which were really expensive, and I'm kind of holding on to a lot of these products that no longer serve me. Open the products, make sure you test them out, squeeze out a small dollop on your hands. If they're still good and you don't use them, then pass them on to someone else who can get better use out of it or donate it. The next item on the list is a sample size travel products. I love to travel. I've amassed so many travel products from hotels, hotel suites. A lot of the times they're really, really amazing products, but they're travel and sample size. So I have an entire bin in my bathroom that is just full of sample products. Why am I keeping it? I always think, oh, one day when I have guests come over, I'll bust out all of my sample products. I'm gonna style it in the shower and they're gonna feel like, oh, they're stepping into a hotel suite. But you know what? I don't remember the last time I had a guest here that used my shower. And here we are 10 years later and I'm still keeping on to all of these travel samples. Here is a reality check. If you're going on a trip, I'll bet that you're not even busting out those sample travel bottles, but you're probably decanting the actual items that you're currently using in your shower into smaller travel bottles. Just get rid of all those travel samples now and trust me, your cabinets will thank you. The next item on the list is perfumes and cologne. If you store your perfumes and colognes in the bathroom, I just want you to be aware that heat and humidity and moisture can cause the perfumes and the colognes to go bad. Of course, this happens over time. So if you're storing it closer to the shower or the tub, the steam actually degrades the products faster. So you wanna keep them away. You also wanna make sure that you still really love the fragrance. You might be holding on to old perfume because it's tied to a particular memory. And that is something I can definitely get on board with and support because I've done the same. But if you're holding on to it because someone gave it to you, it has a sentimental value to it, but you no longer use it, or worse, if you don't even like the smell, then that's definitely a key indicator that you should get rid of it now. I actually house my perfume collection in my closet because it's the first thing that I put on before I get dressed. Think about your process of getting ready in the morning before work or school or getting ready for an evening out and organize those items that you use in that particular order together so it makes your process more efficient and more organized. Which is also why I store my lipstick in my closet, my dressing room, versus the bathroom where my vanity and my makeup is. I put on my lipstick last after I get dressed so I don't get red lipstick on like a white shirt and it just makes more sense that way. The next item that you should purge from your bathroom today are those worn out towels and ratty bath mats. 
You want to assess your towel situation and make sure that they're still really white, they're still really fluffy, and they're still really clean. Obviously, if you have colored bath towels, you just want to make sure that they're still in tip-top shape. I keep bath towels to a minimum so it doesn't clutter my already too small bathroom. So I keep two for myself and two for my husband and I store the rest away. The next item on the list are those damaged hair styling products or beauty appliances that you just don't need. Sort through all of your beauty appliances and hair styling tools like blow dryers, hair straighteners, curling irons, and only keep the essentials that you use regularly. Now that I have short hair, I don't have the need for like five different curling irons and two different straighteners. And I gotta tell you, I know that there's going to be a heated debate over this. The best investment that I've made for my hair lately is the Dyson Airwrap. I mean, the Dyson Airwrap is not cheap. I wanna say I spent a little under $600 for the entire kit with all of the tools. You're probably wondering, my hair is so short, what do I need that Dyson Airwrap for? Especially since I don't even blow dry my hair. But the beauty of the Dyson Airwrap is that there are so many tools in one that I have not only cut down the need to store all of these different items, but that I could get complete functionality out of one tool and just one little cabinet in my bathroom. My husband uses the blow dryer every single day. I use the different attachments for the curling wand pretty much every single time you see this video or I'm straightening my hair. So there are so many uses out of one investment product that I feel is just so worth it. So if you're holding on to that crimper and you never crimp your hair, or you're holding on to that oxygen facial machine and you don't remember the last time you actually sat down and relaxed to even get that facial, then it's time to move on and donate it. The next items on the list are those duplicate hairbrushes and combs. Like you, I've amassed so many different hair brushes and combs over the years. I might have a different hairstyle that I need a particular brush for, or I might be styling my hair in a different way where I'll need so many different types of combs that serve just that purpose. I've noticed over the years that I come back to my tried and true pieces and I've gotten rid of all of those extras that no longer serve me on the daily. I use a wet brush every single day for myself and my daughter's hair. I love it because I use it right out of the shower on wet hair and it also helps detangle my daughter's long hair. Over 15 years ago, I put the Mason Pearson Boar Bristle Brush on my birthday wish list and my girlfriend got it for me and I have not looked back a day since. It's definitely a luxury investment, but once you've used all natural boar bristles over something with synthetic fibers, I swear you will know the difference right away. The next item on the list, is a worn shower curtain. Did you know that plastic shower curtains can actually be washed in your washer on the delicate cycle? Don't use hot water or else the plastic can melt, but you definitely wanna wash your shower curtains of all of the mold and mildew. Over time, the plastic and polyester versions of the shower curtains do degrade, so you might wanna invest in a new one. A brand new shower curtain is such an easy and inexpensive update for you to give your bathroom a really quick refresh. Let's talk about excessive bath toys. Mom of two over here, my bathtub is now crowded with so many different bath toys because I never know what Kamari is gonna be in the mood for. If you have younger kids like I do, these bath toys can quickly grow over time. Keep the toys that your kids use all the time and that they absolutely love and definitely get rid of all of those water squirting toys because if you open them up over time, there is mold and mildew that actually collects in them. That is just not sanitary and definitely not good for their health. And finally, the last thing on the list that is going to make such a visible difference is counter clutter. Counter space to me is the prime real estate in a bathroom. You wanna keep the counters as clear and clutter free as possible. Keep those items that you use on the daily like hand soap, maybe lotion, maybe even mouthwash, but you definitely wanna decant your items and remove all of those big bulky packaging. You might remember my feng shui tip of keeping the toilet lid closed at all times, but you have to know that it is very essential for you to also close the toilet lid every single time you flush the toilet. The air surrounding you harbors so much bacteria that you also wanna keep your toothbrushes hidden and stored away behind closed cabinet doors. 
You also want to keep decorative items to a minimum depending on the space you have and always finish off with something green and bright. We're talking about live indoor plants and fresh flowers as opposed to the faux ones which can collect dust over time. Whew, now that you have purged all of those items from the list, it is time to reorganize. I always reorganize my items into four different categories. Items to keep, items to donate, items to recycle or trash, and another category to relocate. Keep like items together. You'll get a clear and visible sense of how many duplicates you actually have or still need. Always remove the packaging so you can clearly see what you have and store items in acrylic bins or containers for complete visibility. Use a pickup service to schedule donation pickups in advance. I keep a basket in every bedroom of my home so I can toss things in there once I do a quick purge. This allows me to declutter when I see fit and simply box up donation items when the pickup truck comes. Keep a separate trash bag beside you to remove unwanted items immediately and take it out to your bins so you don't crowd your bathroom trash cans. Once you start the purging and reorganization process, you might find that there are some items in your bathroom that clearly don't belong there. I once found a small rubber spatula from my kitchen because I was trying to remove the last of the lotion from this little bin and I left it there. So clearly the rubber spatula doesn't belong in my bathroom and I need to relocate it back to my kitchen. And my final tip on purging and reorganizing your bathroom is to time yourself and chunk down the work. I find that putting myself on a timer really keeps me focused on the task at hand. To me, it's almost like a fun little challenge that you're trying to do. See if you can declutter the countertop in under 10 minutes. I find that if I chunk down the different tasks that I need to do, it doesn't feel so overwhelming. As a busy mom of two who also runs a design business from home and creates daily content, I also tackle a mountain of chores on my to-do list. I used to look at a looming pile of dishes in the sink and I just thought, oh my gosh, I'm never going to get to these dishes. But one time I actually timed myself to see how long it would take me to do the dishes and it was only nine minutes. I mean, that is measly compared to the amount of time I spend on doing far less. So don't despair when it comes to tackling your bathroom. Timing yourself is an excellent way to be more realistic about what you can and cannot achieve in a small amount of time. That's it for today's video. We are finally at the end. What did you think of today's list? Are there items in the bathroom that you can purge right now to give it a really quick refresh? Is there a cluttered cabinet in the bathroom that you've been meaning to reorganize but you really haven't made the time to do it? Hopefully this video is a wake-up call to you to get more inspired and clean out that decluttered bathroom to create a more functional and calming space. I have a ton of bathroom design, storage, and organization videos on the channel now. I'll link them all for you in the description box below, so definitely check those out. If you like this type of content and you want more bathroom design tips, please give this video a thumbs up. Comment below and let me know what's the first item on your list that you're going to purge today. Share this video with anyone you know who's looking to reorganize their bathroom, and of course subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Click that little notification bell to be notified of new videos that we drop every Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week.